This is how to save money earning very little in Zimbabwe. Watch this video closely because most world people consider saving as the first step in building riches. Your savings this year could be the boost you need to achieve financial freedom. You could be someone earning decent wages but failing to have that dollar to spend. So what exactly do you need to do to build savings? The process follows four simple rules and I'm going to take you through them all. The first step which is the most important but can equally be as difficult is having a budget that prioritizes saving. Most of us are just using our salaries to buy as much as they can afford without paying ourselves first. And if something that needs more money pops up, we just throw more money at it. Budgeting does not necessarily mean that you are going to stop buying and keep your money locked away somewhere else. Rather, it is the planning of how you're going to use your money strategically that is budgeting. So when budgeting, you're going to decide how much per month are you going to allocate to savings. For example, if you're earning $250 just like most civil servants or 300 bucks, you can choose if you're going to allocate 10 bucks to savings. If you are allocating 50 bucks, I myself would allocate 50 bucks. After paying myself first the 50 bucks from my whole salary of 250 bucks, I'll make sure that all the other expenses are catered for by the 200 bucks that we would have left. So I know that's very difficult because each and every level of salary increment will require you to level up and upgrade. But there was a time when civil savings would earn something below 100 bucks, let's say 80 bucks for the whole month. And people still survived. They were eating food, they were eating meat. And when the salaries got to 200 bucks, they sort of like shook up their lives and upgraded their lifestyles. So that's something you need to take cognizant of. So we can see that people can adjust their budgets according to what they earn. So if you say you are earning 250 bucks and you allocate your 50 bucks to savings, just make do just like when you were earning less than 100 bucks. You are not eating eggs, you are not eating bacon. Because if you are eating bacon and you don't have any savings, then you cannot afford bacon. I guess I'm a little bit clear on budgeting. So when you're budgeting, if you allocate a certain amount to savings, make do with what's left. Let go some luxuries that need you to spend all your money. If you've completed this stage, which I've pointed earlier on that it might be difficult, then the rest is going to be easy for you. Let's move to point number two. Secondly, determine how you're going to safeguard your savings to avoid being tempted to break your bank and consume your own savings, having them stolen or eaten by rats, or maybe just losing count and think that you have more than what you actually have. In Zimbabwe, you could consider keeping your savings in a metallic box in a secret corner of your bedroom. If you are keeping large sums of money, consider opening a bank account, either an offshore account or an account with the local bank, but you would have to keep a keen ear to the news in case they wake up saying the US dollars are now being liquidated. Let us say that you are a risk taker and you are willing to invest your savings so that they multiply. You can consider investing on the Zimbabwe stock exchange market. There's a whole video about this. Thirdly, you have to learn to tame your cravings. Yes, tame your cravings. No matter how difficult and inaccessible your savings might be, failure to tame these addictions and cravings can lead to one breaking their own bank and consuming their savings recklessly. One effective way of taming addictions and cravings is having a vision of why you are seven. What do you want to achieve after seven? Let's say, for example, you're seven for a car. Think of using a $20 note from your stash as exchanging a rear view mirror of your car for a bottle of wine or for a bottle of Zambezi. Now, would you trade a rear view mirror of your car for this bottle of wine? If the answer is yes, then you're not really serious of what you want to achieve. You don't have a good vision of what you want to achieve after seven. If you're seven to buy a certain thing, let's say a big thing like a house, consider using a hundred dollar note from your stash is exchanging a whole window or a whole door for 
whatever you want to buy to satisfy your immediate craving. So j- by just thinking of things that way, to say, oh, if I use a $50 note from my stage, it will be like exchanging a whole wheel for my car that I'm saving for. This reminds me of Steve back in university. Steve was somebody who was not really addicted to alcohol, but oftentimes he craved alcohol. So you'd say, please, brilliant, keep this money for me and do not give me back this money until the end of this month, for example. But then two days down the line, he would come to me and say, oh, brilliant, I have had such, such a problem. Please give me back that, that money. He would have like really good reasons why I should give him back the money. Like he would say, mom got sick. His brother once got arrested. But I, I would know deep down that he's lying. And I would say no to these reasons. But he was very persuasive. Steve would then say, well, of the savings that you have right now, you take 2% of whatever the amount that we have. Who am I to refuse money? Lastly, and this is the golden rule of saving, act broke. Yes, act broke. You heard me right. When people know that you have some cash staged away that you don't intend to use, they will come to you with all sorts of reasons why you should lend them your hard-earned money. Some people will even hate you for refusing with the money you sacrificed ice cream for. Wow, what a sense of entitlement, right? Some fans have very good ideas of how everyone should spend their money. Don't fall for that trap. It will blow your savings. Act broke. Let's say that you realize that some environments are triggering you to spend over the 200 bucks budget of the month. You have to avoid them completely. I mean, it wouldn't hurt. Acting broke whilst saving will exempt you from unnecessary loss of money, like contributing at church, social gatherings, and any other spaces. I mean, it's unconventional, but so is our economy. So there you have it. Four rules to follow, trying to save money, earning very little in Zimbabwe. But wait, how do you act broke trying to save money? Here are a couple of ways. Number one, avoid Stockville with people that you do not trust. Scratch that. Avoid Stockville. Avoid quick money-making schemes. I mean, as Zimbabweans have had so many lessons from the days of MMM to eCreator, all trying to give us a lesson that one bed in your hand is worth two or more in the wild. Number two, avoid expensive trends that have no way of getting your money back. Thirdly, do not lend your money to people. I don't know if I'm saying this enough. Do not give money to people. Don't let them borrow money from you especially those who are close to you because most of the times we are too shy to ask for our money back so that's a problem and that will blow your savings however you are exempted from this tip if these people close to you really need the money like if someone really needs an operation at the hospital or if it's more grave than that number four avoid buying affection and love using money and time is just not good for savings. Rather, use words and other actions of kindness to show that you love somebody. But if you use money, then say bye-bye to the savings. Because, you know, love makes us do stupid things which are not good for our pocket. Having savings has so many benefits. You have that confidence that people don't even know where it's coming from. Savings makes it easy for you to start even a side hustle or achieve your vision since there will always be money lying around and not cutting from your usual life expenses. I know a lot of people say, don't save, you would rather invest. I'm not completely against them, but I say, save in order to invest. I myself try to save and invest on the Zimbabwe stock exchange market, buying stocks from companies. There's a whole video on how to buy stocks on the Zimbabwe stock exchange market using the C-Trade account find the link in the description box. Thank you for watching this video. Go and amass wealth. Good luck.